Today we are looking at job number 11649 and it's a smaller, yeah, a smaller board. I'll show you in a second. Broken PlayStation 5. HDMI port's gone, so that's what we're going to be fixing today and trying to replace. As you can see, that is the state of the HDMI port. You can see it right at the end. So we're going to get that fixed up. This is actually a newer model number that I've seen from Sony and it's EDM033. It's interesting because the first PlayStation 5 board is 010, the second one is 020, and this one is 033. From what I've seen anyway, I could be wrong. There is a difference with this board compared to 020, which was the predecessor. The board we're fixing today is gonna to be this one. This is the older version 020. So this is 033, this is 020. Look at the size difference on these boards. And I'm holding them the same way in which they actually go in the case. If I put the 033 in front of the 020, you can see roughly that's about, if I can line it up straight, that's about the size difference. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's half, but I would say it's a considerable percentage smaller. Components wise, they look to be in roughly the same place, bar a few obvious ones. For example, where the battery goes on the board is a lot lower on this one compared to this one, where it's a little bit higher. I don't know whether it's a different power supply, the same power supply. On this one, it's horizontal, whereas on the other older version of the 020, it's actually vertical. I just thought it was quite interesting because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a fraction of the size of the previous boards. Don't think it necessarily makes any difference whatsoever to the weight of the console. They're still using the massive heatsink, etc. And yeah, it seems like they got all the components in the same place. Let's head over to the scope and get this PS5 fixed. Taking the board over to our heater, I'm not talking about this little handheld heater that keeps me warm. I'm talking about this infrared heater here. We're just going to dunk the board onto the heater and take the port off. I am now going to use my solder sucker to get rid of any solder that we have on the board that is in the ground holes. Now looking at this, the HDMI circuit, which is on usually on this side, it's usually right about here. We still have our small capacitor here and a small capacitor here, but I'm pretty sure we have, we're supposed to have like a diode here with another cap or resistor around this area. I did see something on the back of the board, so we'll have a look at that in a second. I'm assuming they've just put it on the other side. We go, the holes are now clear using my solder sucker. Nice and easy. Whilst we're still on the same page, whilst this is hot, let's just give it a nice little clean. Just making sure we are all good to go. Just like that. And let's turn it over and inspect the back like we said we were going to do. Because the board is smaller, it heats up a lot quicker as well, which is obviously a benefit. And here's the circuit that I was talking about. This is usually on the other side. We still have a smaller diode and a cap here. But you're seeing here we've got the resistor and the diode on this side now instead. Get rid of this. This is factory flux. Nice. Whilst we're here on the back, I'm just going to add some flux to these ground holes just here and just add leaded solder into them so we can get ready to drop the port on. Just like that. And we do the exact same on the other side, but we do need to clear out the pads on the other side where the HDMI port is. So some of that flux has flown through the holes. So I'm just going to add some more solder on this side. And now just some more flux here and some wick. There we go. Nice little clean. And more flux, rinse and repeat. Clean, flux, clean, flux. I'm doing it off the edge of a table so it's quite hard to, uh, to navigate. It's best to have your hand resting on a surface when doing soldering. Not dangling in midair makes it very complicated. Okay, we've already got a bit of flux on there, so we're just going to add a tiny bit more. Again, this is a new tube, so I say a tiny bit more, but it has just completely fallen off. You can't ever have enough flux as long as you tidy up. I guess some people will argue the fact that you don't even need to tidy up. And now we're just going to flow the pour into place. Quick clean with isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab just to make sure we're all good. And let's just go over the pins with a soldering iron, put some more flux on. Got a little bridge at the end. Might need to use a little bit of solder braid to get that one out. There we go, it'll be okay. 
You always have to be really careful on this side because of the small cap. All right, should be okay. Let's clean up and we can test the pins. All right, let's give the pins a little nudge just to make sure. Get that cotton bud hair out of it first. More cotton bud hair, but all we'll seem really solid. Seems like a good job. Test these ones. Okay, because they're a little bit tricky because they're on the end, but they seem all right. Just going in for one last clean whilst I'm here. I forgot to press record. So now I'm just giving it a clean after I've just sorted out the uh, the solder blobs. There we go. Perfect job on the back as well. Let's give it a test. Turning on the PlayStation 5, massive thank you to Mark for assisting me pressing the button. This one actually took quite a long time to come on. I don't think it was turned off properly when it was brought into the shop. There we go, we have the, the white light, the logo, and the thumbs up. And that is another PlayStation 5 fixed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.